topics and opinions expressed in the following show are solely those of the hosts and their guests and not those of W4CY Radio, its employees, or affiliates. We make no recommendations or endorsements for radio show programs, services, or products mentioned on air or on our web. No liability, explicit or implied, shall be extended to W4CY Radio or its employees or affiliates. Any questions or comments should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for choosing W4CY Radio. Who is January Jones? She is not a young, beautiful, talented actress on Mad Men. She is not an older, gorgeous, exotic dancer from the Johnny Carson Show. She is an author, and she wrote, Thou Shall Not Wine, The Eleventh Commandment, that reached number one at Amazon.com. She is a reality TV golf personality with World High Stakes Golf televised on HDNet. She is a humorist and winologist expert. She is your featured host today on January Jones Sharing Success Stories. So sit back, relax, and get ready to laugh and listen to Ms. Jones with her eclectic roster of guests as you learn life's lessons. These stories plus sharing equals success. Welcome and remember, beware. Because you are entering the no whining world of January Jones. Hello, I'm January Jones, and I'd like to welcome you to our podcast today. Now, for my listeners, let me ask you a question Would you like to learn what it's like to be an internationally known author and speaker? during this pandemic. Have you ever wondered what it would take to be a transformational coach? Do you even know what a transformational coach is? Well, we're going to find out today. Can you imagine what it is, his latest book, and what it took to write a book called Quantum Leap Thinking? Yes, the book is entitled Quantum Leap Thinking. Have you ever wanted to meet a real live actor? and a transformational coach all in one. Now you can meet someone who has walked the walk and now he is going to talk the talk with us. If you can answer yes or maybe to any of the questions I've asked, then you are in the right place. And I would like to welcome you to January Jones sharing success stories. So now it's time, sit back, relax, get yourself some wine, get some cheese and crackers and join me in the no wine zone. Now, let me tell you a little bit about my guest today. He is a true Renaissance man, speaker, coach, philosopher, clinical hypnotist, actor, award-winning performer, and best-selling author. He delivers a message of unlimited possibilities, passion, love, fun, and adventure. He is a living example of the creativity of the human mind at work and his mission to educate and entertain people. It's my pleasure to welcome back again to the show, James Mapes. Mapes. Hi, James. How are you doing? Hi. I am very good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we had our struggle getting on the air today, but now that we're here, let's make the most of our time. Let me ask you a question. How has the uh, pandemic affected you, your career, and your life with children? What's the pandemic done like for you? Well, it took a lot of adjustment, <clears throat> but I'll tell you the upside of the pandemic is I have gotten more writing done on a new book than right. I ever could have had without the pandemic. Uh-huh. And I've been very blessed in my speaking career and my other careers, and they are multiple. <clears throat> that uh, I, I'm i comfortable, so I'm not like I was back in the 70s as a hungry actor doing soap operas. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, the pandemic has helped you in that you found more time. I think that's happened for a lot of people. I think it's been a tragedy, but then in, as we work our way through it, it's becoming a blessing in many ways. Um, what's your favorite part of your career now? Uh, during this pandemic time? I would say writing, but I certainly miss being in front of an audience. I I think I, my first uh, appearance in front of an audience was 
when I was six years old playing Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> and then I got my first magic set when I was about 10. And it was, it, I did my first show with all the neighbors for 10 cents. And the first thing I did was to say, choose a card. And I fell and the cards went all over the audience. And I ran away and my mother had to return all the dimes. <laughs> Well you, well, you have so many careers, so many successful careers. It's hard to keep track of it all. What do you feel is the theme that connects these careers one to each other throughout your lifetime? I will, I will answer that by going backwards. Um, I was trained as an actor. So I still uh -huh. am. I love because acting, especially on film, is allows you to express the deepest truth possible doing a character. Most people think that acting is pretending, but it really isn't. So from an actor, I became a clinical hypnotist, which I've never stopped. I became a stage hypnotist. And then after that, people wanted, I, would, I was doing so many stage shows and they were very ethical. They weren't nightclub that people say, well, can you do something else? Can you do a seminar? I said, oh, well, of course, that's one of my, uh, my big feelings is always say yes. <laughs> so I developed a seminar called Positive Self-Image Training. That morphed into one called uh, Choices. And then later in 82, I added another career, which mm -hmm. was uh, speaking to corporations. And I had to totally reinvent what I was doing. And that prompted the 14-year writing Quantum Leap Thinking. Uh, and then I was, that was a, that was a wonderful time because I traveled all over the world many times and, uh, it allowed me honestly financial freedom. I never expected it. And then after, after Being that, an actor. I, yeah, oh, yeah, listen, actors, I know, listen, I've, I've got two acting friends. One will remain nameless. One is Tony Hopkins. No. So, so I don't think he'll ever have to worry about money. <laughs> uh, so the theme <clears throat> with everything I've ever done, and it, I didn't know it till later, by the way, uh -huh. why I was driven, because the light in people's eyes when they became aware of their thinking and discovered that they could actually transform their behavior, which we'll get to that word in a moment. Yes. That was the highest of the highs, better than the applause. Now, going back in the 70s and 80s when I was doing 250 shows a year uh, at universities and art centers, uh, I still get letters uh, uh -huh. from people saying, you opened up my thinking to me. You, uh, you, you, t you showed on that stage that I could use my subconscious to change or transform my behavior. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that... that you can, that's a through line to everything I do. Yeah. What a wonderful thing to have that as part of you, what you're able to help people achieve. Um, in this crazy mixed up pandemic world that we're all trying to live in and get through, how do you stay grounded? How do you, you yourself stay grounded? Well, I have a garden, a vegetable garden that is 25 <laughs> feet by 20 feet and the hours with my bad knees, uh -huh. I, have, I have planted alone and weeded alone. It's like I'm very big and have been since a child. Uh -huh. Hiking, Boy Scouts, Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, Explorer Scouts is uh, being outside and being in the earth. Uh -huh. So that's that's one part of it. The second part is... I, uh, you know my wife well. Yes. Uh, she's a movie critic. She is my best friend in the world. And I, we never get bored. Of, we were talking about this last night. I said, shouldn't we just be a little bored with each other? <laughs> maybe, I don't know, maybe the. <laughs> how, how but long it's is, true. How so, long and is, the just... other thing is I, um, I would every day during the pandemic, maybe I missed one or two days, I would call someone that I knew or go back in my files with the hundreds of clients that I work with, uh, uh -huh. I would make one call and just say, hi. And they would be so shocked that I was calling. And they uh -huh. said, why, why are you calling? I said, I, I don't want anything. I'm just in this world today. 
Uh -huh. uh, I guess I'm checking up on you and you know, it's okay to tell me you're in terrible spirits. It's okay to tell me anything uh -huh. and it works. It works. Oh, by the way, it works for everyone. And I suggest it strongly because people have a tendency and have had a tendency to pull away from people in this time. And that's just the opposite. We don't have to be physically present, yeah. but we can be present. Yes. Um, how long have you been married, may I ask? Uh, well, let me go back to the beginning. I was married for 16 years to a wonderful, my, my late uh, ex-wife, oh. <clears throat> for 16 years, a wonderful uh -huh. actress, a wonderful Broadway actress, film actress, so forth. I met Susan, I think, 36 years ago. And we became friends. We lived together for 16 years. And then Jane Powell, the wonderful MGM actress, and her uh -huh. husband, Dickie Moore, from The Little Rascals, married us in their backyard 22 years ago. Wonderful. What a, I know it's a beautiful love story. Now, during this difficult time, what uh, suggestions would you make to my listeners, uh, ways that they can reduce the stress in their life during this time? Well, there are a lot of answers. Let me just pick the most practical one. People, uh, this is a generalization, and I apologize for that uh, mm -hmm. in advance, but I will tell you a, a little story. I sent off a audio tape to, uh, on relaxation and stress reduction. Mm -hmm. uh, and I did it for a limited time of two weeks. They could access it uh, from a link in, in my re most recent book. No one, no one accessed it. Now, and I said, I guarantee you, I'm not like making something up here. I guarantee you that if you listen to this, and I've addressed mental, physical, spiritual, emotional, social, and addressed auditory, visual, kinesthetic, it will help you reduce your stress, which will help your relationship, which will help everything. No one access it. And this is the fourth time I've done this. I did it with a uh, another one that we can talk about or not about surgery. Uh -huh. So I, I, I just suggest so strongly that people go to the web, not necessarily my stuff. Uh -huh. There's so much free information where you can do, you want to call it meditation, don't let that scare you. I don't, you know, I've been meditating since 72, but it, to me, it's a, something I've developed where I can just calm my mind now in six minutes. And I do it twice a day. I used to do it. Really? Wow. And so that's number one. Number two, I believe the most virtuous value in the world is being curious. Now you can be judgmental or curious. You can be harsh or curious. You can feel sorry for yourself or curious. So curiosity and reading is a blessing to me. I, I, I've got literally read two books a week, not because I have to, because I enjoy it. It takes your mind away, depending on what you read, it calms you down or gives you adventure. So all, so these sorts of things are practical. Everyone can do it. If you have kids running around give them something to do, use your imagination, use your creativity. That's what I'm all about is creativity. Oh, so right. there's a lot of good things you can do. Right. Wonderful suggestions. You know, before we go on, James, I'd like you to share with our listeners uh, your website information, how they can contact you, how they can find you, and also uh, share with them their, your books and where those are available. Uh, sure. It's www.jamesmapes.com, jamesmapes.com. And I encourage you to sign up for my almost monthly, monthly newsletter. <laughs> <Okay>. which <laughs> it, it, it takes me a lot of work. The new one that's coming out is Seven Steps uh, to Stop Blaming. <laughs> and so I do a, a, a very practical you can sign up for it on the homepage of my website, or you can email me at jamesmapes.com. All my books are on the website. All my recordings are on the website. You can look under, you know, toolkit for the mind. So I, I think that's pretty clear. I don't, I'm very, I'm very bad at hustling products. I, I'm just, <laughs> I'm not good at it. <laughs> 
<laughs> and, and that's a shame because your products are so incredibly wonderful. <laughs> you know, James, you write a lot about fear. Uh, what is fear? And how do you help people deal with fear in their lives? I think there's a lot of fear going on right now in our world, don't you? Uh but first, I got to start, and, and perhaps not everyone's going to agree with me because this is simplistic, but I believe valid. I believe there are only two emotions that we can feel and that everything else is derivative of that, is, that emotion. What, do you, what would you guess are the two emotions, January? Oh, well, I, I, I definitely feel one of my emotions is love. Well, there, that's the one. And so what's the opposite? What are we talking about? Hate? Fear. No. Fear, fear. Hate comes from fear. Fear. Okay. And okay. every so love and fear. Now, if people can wrap around that, mm -hmm. is if when one exists, the other can't. So when love of fear, uh, uh, love is in uh, present, that's what you're uh, uh, living. Mm -hmm. You cannot feel fear. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. When you feel fear, you cannot feel love. So that's why I do a lot of stuff on forgiveness but let's go back to the to the how the mind works uh is that okay can we talk oh, about yeah. that a little bit? for sure i'd love talk about that okay is uh people have heard the subconscious and conscious mind but that from the average lay person is a little ephemeral so let's let's make it very simple let's look at the conscious mind as mm -hmm. the mind you're using right now the part of our mind to listen to think to judge me, or criticize me, or praise me. All that is part of the conscious mind. The conscious mind is a judgmental machine. Mm -hmm. And it is the only part of the mind that can visualize. And we can talk about that later because visualization, the ability to visualize a positive uh -huh. future or visualize health affects actually biochemically the way the, the body works. Okay, so let's look at the subconscious. The subconscious, number one, you have to remember this, does not think. And that's hard for people to say, so what do you mean it doesn't? Well, it doesn't think. No. It, is, it, it, is a, it is the center of our emotions, the, our memories, our mm -hmm. genetic memories, as well as our program memories. Mm -hmm. And uh, most children are programmed by the time they're six. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of fear comes from, from there. Mm -hmm. So the subconscious, the big part, I think I did this on one of your shows where I said, imagine biting a lemon. And I uh -huh. talk about the qualities of a lemon. It's bumpy. It's, it's, uh, uh, it, it smells like a lemon. Yeah. Uh, and I cut it in half and I drip the juice and I say, I'm going to take a bite out of it. Pretend you're biting a lemon. And I gush this lemon in my mouth. I'm just thinking about it. it gives me the willies. And <laughs> I ask people, did they experience it? In an audience, 90% of the audience, all audiences, will raise their hand, yes, I did. Uh -huh. And I say, how is that possible? Yeah. And it's the greatest miracle of the human mind. That means that you can create through your imagination something mm -hmm. out of nothing. That's a biochemical change. So if that's true, and it is true, and you can Google it and do all this stuff, is how you imagine mm -hmm. you have control of. Yeah. And fear is at the center of the subconscious. Now that's the part that doesn't think. It is programmed primitively, our DNA, for two things. To move towards pleasure, mm -hmm. even if the pleasure creates self-destruction, Oh, right? yeah. let's eat that gallon of ice cream. Yum. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's move not towards a pleasure mm -hmm. or away from a threat. That's fear. So it's fight or flight. And that's actually how our being works. Okay. So if people can wrap around that, well, that's interesting. Then if you can start, because consciousness to me is very important or being aware. What am I fearing now? Is it fear of love? Mm -hmm. Is it fear of rejection or change or success? Yes, success or failure mm -hmm. or poverty or commitment. Those are the major fears, not fear of death and loss. Yeah. But those are the major fears that almost, including me, <clears throat> has one of those fears to deal with. Mine was rejection. I found out uh, 
not all that long ago that I was adopted when I was three. It was an accident. I was never, and I'm 76. So that's, that's really a shock to your system. Wow. And, you know, when my mother, I found out, made that divorce happen because of logical things, uh, I, I was programmed for fear of rejection. And I've had to work on it all my life. Maybe that's why I'm an entertainer. I love getting applause. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> but, that's, but I had to be very careful because people that are afraid or have fear often create the fear. So, mm -hmm. for example, if you're afraid of rejection, real I don't talk just for everybody's afraid of rejection, but say you mm -hmm. determines your choices in life. <clears throat> well, then, that may mean that subconsciously you reject somebody before he or she rejects you or yeah. you isolate yeah. yourself because if you're isolated, you can't be rejected. So, But you don't know you're doing that, which is important to know. Or you reject someone before he or she rejects you. Yeah, that happens a lot. Yep. And then you can say, oh, poor me. You know, but yeah. it, 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 and that because that then becomes the rationalization. But it's the same rejection, change, success, failure, commitment, poverty, those. So be aware and be aware of your actions during this. What choices? Do, what do you say? What do you do that is not coming from love? If it's coming from fear, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying, look at your life. What don't you have that you want? You know, um, we just have a short time left. Um, you are an imaginologist. And your recent book is, I love the title, Imagine That. <laughs> because I, I, I think about that a lot with all these things going on. What does it, uh, to be an imaginologist, what does that mean? And how does that fit into our life? Well, I kind of, somebody asked me what I am. And it's, you know, try to explain all my careers. They go, we must not be good at anything. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my playground has always been and will always be the imagination. My knowledge is, it's the one area it's extensive in, is how the imagination uh, heals us. Uh, one of my programs, and I'll make this very quick, is pre-surgery patients, is how do you help people get through the fear of surgery because it works against them. Yeah. Uh, so the imagination has everything to do with every moment. And when people can stop and reflect, and that's why taking a little time to yourself, even if it's five minutes or start at one minute, is look inside and see what you're afraid of, because then how do you visualize the future? Are you, uh, do you visualize cat catastrophes? Or, you know, it's, 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 we make all this stuff up and that's hard for people to get. We make up the future. Yeah, the future is ours. Um, that is so hard for a lot of people to uh, grasp and to get a hold of and, and to make it a part of their lives. You're very positive. Uh, person, uh, and I that's why I enjoy having you on the show so much because you. you spread goodwill and good cheer and positivity. Were you always this positive about life? No, no, no. I was, I was so afraid, uh, as a child, <clears throat> I got beat up and depanced all the time in school. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I mean, all school, I have no good memories of. Uh, well, I do now because I've contacted a couple of my old high school friends. Uh -huh. But I was I allowed myself to be bullied. I thought everybody should be nice to everybody. And I next thing I know, my pants were hanging in a tree. <laughs> <laughs> or, or I was beat up. Yeah. Uh, so I think when I started, this was 19. Let me just think for a second. Really started this where my knowledge was growing. Someone threw a book at me, literally threw a book at me uh -huh. called Pick and Grow Rich <clears throat> by Napoleon. Yeah. I know. Very right? good. And I, that, so I read that. It, I didn't know till later it was thrown at me as a joke. I read that book and it changed <laughs> my life. I went to see, I flew in the 70, I think 71, I saw Lou Holtz, uh, Zig Ziglar, W. Clement oh. Stone, Robert Schuller, and a big convention thing that was in Milwaukee. Uh-huh. 
I didn't have a lot of money. I went and I bought all their tapes. And that, <laughs> that really put me on a path yeah. to learn, especially to learn. Oh, I think that's such a wonderful thing for you to share with our listeners, because so many people don't appreciate the value of having a mentor. And when I say mentor, they, with what the access we have to the books, the Internet, the things that yes. are available, there's no excuse not to find a mentor. And uh, you you are a wonderful mentor to many, many people. And, I, and I'm so happy you could come on the show today. I have just one really, really quick little question. I always ask everyone, if you could have dinner with anyone living or alive besides me, who would you choose right now? Wow, without thought, Ben Franklin. Oh, okay, okay. Yep, one of my, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> for you many, too. many, many reasons. I, as I said, I can imagine that. You I mean, like why? <laughs> you two having dinner would be incredible. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. And uh, I'll have you back again when we can have a longer, a little more organized visit. A little more. Of my, my, it's got to be from my end. I'm sorry. But uh, uh, no techno by the way, one of my areas of not expertise, no expertise, technology. Yeah, me too. Gotcha. We're in the same boat there. So now for my wonderful listeners, thank you so much for entering the No Wine Zone with James and I today. Please share our story and our show with everyone you know. And remember, you must stop whining and then you must start smiling. And if that doesn't work, then you can just start eating chocolate. Lots and lots of chocolate. <laughs> Take care and stay safe <laughs> until we meet again, if you can imagine that. Thank you. You're welcome. We want to thank you for listening to January Jones Sharing Success Stories. Always remember Ms. Jones' personal mantra, if you can think it, you can do it. That's what all of our guests have done with their lives, and so can you. You are the ultimate success coach in your own life. All you need to do will be to start sharing your own story with your family and friends. We hope that our guest stories will encourage you to explore an equation in your future that will combine your creativity, plus connecting with others will enable you to be successful too. Always remember, your passion plus your purpose will equal prosperity as you explore the wonderful world of January Jones.